Welcome back to the channel. Look at that, Steve 2.0, hell yeah. It means we're gonna get some shit done. We have a ton of work to do on the car today. Uh, power tour is fast approaching. I call in reinforcements. The heavies are here, that's right. So we're gonna dive right in, get to the fuel system. I'm gonna run a new return line. I got more fuel holes that just came in. We're gonna remove the existing fuel feed line so we can get some more room to fasten stuff. And then after that, I think we're on to throttle pedal, maybe downpipe, etc. So stay tuned. All right, so Steve is working on removing the factory fuel feed line just to get it out of the way so that if we need to we can run our lines there give us a little more room i am going to work on the fuel filler neck so this 510 from the factory has like a abs plastic fuel fill hose and it was not engaged uh, was not put onto the fuel filler pipe on the tank very far it was like maybe i don't know three to seven inch or so and this is a hard plastic line so I doubt this is actually going to squeeze down and seal very well. So to remedy this situation, I'll show you. So this is a piece of two inch ID fuel rated fill hose. And what my, what my plan is, I'm going to cut the flared section back on this fill neck and I'm going to put a small piece of this fuel rated fill hose in its place to connect up to the tank hopefully to eliminate leaks. Uh, I don't really believe that this system was gonna work very well. I, I don't want any fuel leaks out of the back of this car. So that's my plan. Steve's working on the line. I'm gonna tackle this. Okay, so off camera, we did a whole bunch of stuff. You may have seen little bits and pieces of that on the time lapse, but uh, probably not the perfect view. So from the engine bay side, um, let's see, kind of finalized the fuel line, fuel rail and everything. Uh, the fuel pressure gauge is installed. The new return line is hooked up back here, and then here's the feed. So fuel lines are all buttoned up at this point. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, the car is on cribbing blocks right now. I'm gonna slide under there and get measured for a drive shaft because I need to drop the drive shaft off this coming week so that it can be shortened and rebalanced. So I'll get that measurement. And then I think after that, we're gonna go after um, laying out the wiring harness under the hood and potentially even fabricating the gas pedal. All right, we're back after a delicious lunch, a uh, local drive-in. Thank you, Charlie's. Man, that place is awesome. We have solved another problem. Uh, the fuel system is ready to go, but we need a throttle pedal. Any of you who are swapping in a KA24 or any of the newer engines into an older Datsun, you'll probably know, especially the 510 has a throttle pedal with a piece of linkage that then connects to the carburetor. So a common fix for this is to use a 240SX pedal assembly. I got this one off of eBay for like 35 bucks. Um, so here's what you need to do to pull this off. So the only thing you really need to pull this off is a pedal out of a 240SX. I think this one came from an S13 or an S14. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so the main difference between these is the pedal mounting or the pivot mounting flange or pattern. So here's the Datsun one. It's three holes. This is just a little plastic bracket that the pedal pivots in, just like that. So if you look at the two pedals next to each other, they're actually almost identical, except for the, the Datsun pedal bolts to the floor and then pushes down on the throttle pedal or uh, throttle linkage. So a 240SX pedal, all I did is I reused the upper hole right here and I turned the lower hole into a slot. And what that's gonna do is allow me to run a single bolt right through to the pedal standoff that's already there. So I can bolt this back into the car using two bolts. So I'm gonna get that started and show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, here is the magic of this whole setup. 
This top bolt is in the existing hole uh, in the pedal standoff and through the original bracket on the 240SX pedal. And here is the self tapper that goes through that lower slot. And there, up there, you can see, you can probably see, let's see, yeah, right there. So we need to drill a new hole right where that pedal goes through the firewall, which is right above the bolt for the uh, steering column support. So when I order a new cable, punch a hole right there, thread the cable through there, and then this sucker is all set. So there it is, simple, easy solution for a throttle, a cable throttle pedal in a 510. So off camera, we spent a lot of time cutting, pie cutting, mocking up, taping, retaping, whatever. Here's what we came up with for the three inch downpipe using the Guillermo Fab part. Unfortunately, Guillermo, I'm sorry, I could not keep your logo in there. Uh, I don't have enough room between the turbo and the or firewall, etc. Anyway, uh, this three inch downpipe essentially goes perfectly down in between the transmission and the steering box right down there and it follows the uh, angle of the floorboard so i'll have to extend it at the bottom and then later add a muffler but for now the down pipe's ready to go we're moving on to the dump pipe for the wastegate we're going to get that tube cut up and tacked in place and i think wrap up for today it's the next day it's 70 degree day in wisconsin shop doors are open it is beautiful here's what i've been working on so you guys remember from yesterday, we got the downpipe fitted up right here. Here's our three inch downpipe. We have good clearance to the transmission and the steering box. Well, here is the dump pipe right here. So from this view, you can see a little bit better of how that dump pipe for the wastegate is routed. It comes right off the bottom of the wastegate, takes a hard 45. Then there's another bend right there and then comes down right over by the transmission here and there's one more little cut right at the end to kind of pivot it away from the trans so that's kind of how the wastegate dump tube is going to look and the downpipe right there stuff actually fits pretty good i'm going to pull both of these off and try to get them final welded and then get them installed permanently all right so here's the downpipe and the dump tube after welding so this admittedly is not my first time TIG welding stainless, but it is my first time TIG welding stainless pipe. So I won't get too close to these welds. Oh, by the way, these two are mine. Everything else, these beautiful welds you see are from Guillermo Fab, not me. This piece is all welded by me, except for right here. This was Guillermo. You can obviously tell, uh, but I'd say for my first time TIG welding aluminum, especially pipe, uh, it didn't go too bad. The welds don't look super pretty, but they'll definitely hold and they're all sealed up. I think I had the wrong size filler rod. Anyway, uh, I'll probably get a question on what TIG welder I use. And I actually went with a JEGS unit. Uh, this is a 200 amp AC-DC TIG welder. Uh, I've done just a little bit of aluminum so I can weld my own intercooler pipe. This thing was like $540 on sale. Uh, I know there are many better welders out there, but for someone like me who's just learning, uh, this one works great. I also have a Jags plasma cutter, I think works great too. We're back out here again, the wheels and tires, I brought them to a local shop to have new tires put on. I'll explain all of the size choice and the fitment stuff when those get back. In the meantime, since the wheels were off, I took this opportunity to roll the fenders. I didn't buy a tool, I didn't rent a tool, I just did it with a hammer, uh, my body hammer and a three pound maul. I went slow, slowly formed that lip and just folded it up. Give us a little bit more clearance in the front uh, and a little bit more in the back. Hopefully with me and Andrew and the whole trunk full of gear, uh, we won't have any issues, but we'll find out. We do have some options to fix that. We can raise the front with coilovers or we can change out the lowering block in the rear to pick it up. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Welcome back. <laughs> I've said that like five times in this video. I bet you guys thought we were done there. Well, um, I put all that footage together and it was like nine minutes. So I have some other parts and I wanna see if I can get those put on today too. So here's what I got. Uh, this is a 48 inch uh, Dash 4 AN uh, stainless steel uh, oil feed line. This is for the pressure side of the turbo. And then here, I just decided to go with uh, basic push lock 
type hose for the drain. So locally there's like a hydraulic shop. Uh, I got some of this. This is actually, what is this, Eaton? No, yeah, it's Eaton. Uh, this is push lock hose, uh, it's oil resistant. And I think it stand, withstand like 300 PSI of pressure or something without a clamp. So uh, anyway, bolt that to the bottom of the turbo, shove that over the top, trim it to fit. Uh, the fitting that's welded or brazed into the oil pan is just a simple barb. So this will slip right over with a clamp. So I'll take you over to the engine and I'll show you kind of what my plan is for getting oil to the turbo and then also installing an oil pressure gauge. Oh yeah, I forgot. These are the radiator hoses. All right, so these are factory KA hoses for a 240SX. I'm hoping that they are somewhat close to what I need and maybe I can just cut and trim and put a, put a connector in between, hopefully. Uh, if not, then it's back to the drawing board, but these were really cheap on Rock Auto. For the oil feed, KAs have just an oil pressure switch. It's just two contacts in there. I don't even know what this is rated for, but this is a really common place to tap off of the block for uh, pressurized oil. A lot of guys will use a sandwich plate also, but anyway, I'm gonna forego the oil pressure switch since I'm wiring this thing myself. And I will be installing uh, this cheapy oil pressure gauge that I got from Steve. This is left over from the Hornet. Um, and I know, I know the rule is take this uh, plastic line and throw it in the trash. So I'll get a copper line for this to an NPT adapter of some sort. But I went to the same hydraulic shop that I got the hose from and I got this. This is a, so here's the trick with this. Here's the oil pressure switch. These are British standard pipe thread. So straight thread basically with a little O-ring on there. So any standard NPT fitting will not thread in where the British standard pipe thread will. Anyway, here is the British standard pipe thread to NPT adapter. So I'm gonna thread this into the block and then using an NPT nipple here, thread that in. And then I'm gonna to go to an NPT T fitting. And off of the T fitting, I have an eighth inch NPT to dash four AN conversion fitting here and off the other side is where I'm going to thread in for the oil pressure gauge. So I'm no longer going to use this. I don't know. I think having a gauge is a lot better anyway. <clears throat> so uh, I'll go get this stuff installed on the block, show you where that is. All right. I don't know how well you guys can see. It's kind of tight in there, but right next to the oil filter right here, there's a boss that is tapped for the oil pressure switch. So here is the fitting I got. This actually includes a little O-ring on there and that's exactly how the uh, factory oil pressure switch was sealed. So there's an O-ring on there, no need for thread tape. Seems to be threading in just fine. I'm gonna run it in until that O-ring seats up tight against the block. I think that thing's all the way bottomed out. Next, we'll do the aerial, I mean the uh, pipe nipple, and we have our T. Okay, get a wrench on that. All right, so here's what I ended up with. Here is, here's the adapter right here, the nipple and the T. This port right here is gonna be open for the oil pressure line. Here is, or for the gauge, I mean. Here is the oil feed line. So the only thing I have to worry about uh, down under there is the starter. That does have to bolt in there, but I can zip tie this up out of the way. The oil line comes up around the back of the engine here, just like that. Comes up right over the valve cover, and I have two of these cushion clamps holding it down to some of these extra bolt holes on top of the uh, valve cover here. I may even put a third one right there uh, just to keep the line nice and tidy so that it doesn't move around. And here it is. And this is not, this might look kind of tight, like a tight bend, but this is a nice, loose, sweeping feed right here. 
So I think next I will measure, cut, and at least mock up the drain line. All right, I got some updates. So oil feed line to the turbo, held down to the cylinder head, into the inlet flange, and you guys can probably barely see the blue line down there. That is the, that's the oil drain and that runs right down to a bung that was brazed into the oil pan. So turbo is plumbed oil wise, intercooler pipes are done. Um, so this is a factory KA24DE upper radiator hose. All I did was trim this end about two or three inches and it fits, hooks up to the CX racing radiator just fine. Now the lower radiator hose is gonna be a little bit more of an issue as you can see there's all kinds of tangled stuff going on in here so because of where I decided to put the blow-off valve that's gonna make this factory hose really hard to fit so I think what I'm gonna do is use another uh, 90 that I have down here and then I'm gonna cut this hose back just a little bit and then put in a hard 90 to kind of keep this hose away from the blow-off valve under there Otherwise, I think that's going to work because it sneaks around the intercooler pipe here and hits the water pump over there. So this is a factory lower KA hose. So any of you guys looking to do a swap like this in a 510, um, with minimal work, the factory upper and lower radiator hoses can actually work for you. Now, don't look down in here. It's, it's all messy. Look over here. This is nice, right? Yeah, that's cool. And uh, I'm sure you guys have questions about what this is. That's all coming up in the wiring episode. And with that, I think we're going to end for this week. For those of you who aren't subscribed, consider hitting that button. Anybody that wants a shirt, we got shop shirts, we got t-shirts. We also have new Richardson snapback flat brim hats. They're my favorite. I don't even have one yet. That's how new they are. Check them out. They're at the merch site in the description. The link's in the description. All of my subscribers out there, thank you guys so much. You're always helpful. Uh, you guys are a hugely encouraging crowd and I really appreciate that. So hopefully I bring a little bit of that energy back. I'm gonna wrap it up, catch you next week.